When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Have you ever wondered, why do we spend money to eat a ton of food on Thanksgiving? What is the history of it all? In this fall episode, we're diving deep into all things Thanksgiving. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Welcome back to the show, my friend. It is so good to have you here. If you're listening to this episode the day it comes out, I want to wish you a very happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. If you're listening to it later, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I think over the last couple of years, I've really redefined what Thanksgiving means. It used to be about all of the food. And don't get me wrong, I love to eat and the food is a really good part. But these Thanksgivings lately, the last couple of years at least, I try to just use it as a day to be really intentional and really grateful for the things in my life, the things that I probably take for granted on an everyday basis. And if you've never done this, it's it's kind of a nice thing to do. Look around your house, look around all the people that are around, the things that are on your table, what you do for work, and just really offer up some gratitude for for being here, for all you've accomplished. If you've been working on some money goals this year, use this day as a time where you're like, yeah, all right, I'm doing it. I may not be as far as I want, but but that's okay. So today's episode was inspired by a question a couple years ago from Jenny. And Jenny says, hey, Shauna, thanks so, so much for the podcast. I have learned more than I can even imagine. This is the best free degree I've ever gotten in money. You've helped me with so many goals. I've paid off debt. I was finally able to buy a house. And I'm looking forward to getting married in the next couple of years. With Thanksgiving coming up, I kind of had a strange question that I thought would be fun for the show. Do you have any suggestions for 
how to do Thanksgiving on any budget. I have friends and we're thinking about doing a Friendsgiving, but we all have different incomes, different resources, and I want to make sure it's fair for everyone. So just curious if you had any suggestions. Thanks again so much for the show. I recommend it to all my friends, and it's so fun to hang out with you a couple of days a week. Jenny, very good, very good question. We did an episode a couple of years ago with Catherine Spires, the host of Smart Mouth Podcast. If you love food as much as I love food, you will love this podcast. It's really cool. talks about the history behind all types of different foods and cultures, why we eat what we eat. Anyway, I was able to sit down with Catherine live in Los Angeles and talk all about Thanksgiving. How do you have a, a fantastic Thanksgiving on any budget? How do you do a Friendsgiving that's different? We also talked about the history of Thanksgiving and a very fascinating story about the year that there was actually two Thanksgivings. So Jenny, I hope you enjoy this conversation and hey, maybe you might learn something that you share around the Thanksgiving dinner table today. All right, on to the conversation. So Catherine, I am so excited to be hanging out at your place talking <laughs> about too. my favorite subject food and of course friendsgiving. Yes, yes, the best holiday. Yes, um I mean I'm I'm obviously a big fan of of food and love Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving is this week so I thought what a better time to talk about maybe dig a little under the surface mm -hmm. of of Thanksgiving and you know we we sort of grow up and know that Thanksgiving is the turkey and the the cranberries and the stuffing and all of these sorts of things but how did Thanksgiving evolve into this? Uh, it took a long time. It actually <laughs> took a surprisingly long time. Like I had no idea until I started really researching it that it was a really regional holiday from the quote unquote first one up until like <laughs> World War II ish. And it probably became more national at that point because people were feeling maybe more unified and patriotic than they ever had before. But when it started, it was probably in October was the first one. And the date was chosen fairly arbitrarily. And it wasn't chosen until the 1930s. Really? Actually. Yeah. It was Franklin Roosevelt who finally had to like throw down the hammer on which day it was going to be. And there was one year where there were two Thanksgivings because um, Franklin Roosevelt and Congress were still fighting it out as to which one it would be. So you had to cook that meal twice <laughs> had to maybe right, right some people probably did yeah no i wonder if it was like divided along political lines because he wanted it to be the fourth thursday in november and congress and business owners wanted it to be the third thursday in the month because they wanted a longer shopping period interesting so they were already thinking about that black friday thing before it ever became a thing yeah, and I don't know if the original intention was to have one particular day that's like actually a physical danger <laughs> to people, but it, I think apparent. I mean, it must have always been that the sense was that you don't think about Christmas. It's not proper to think about Christmas until you have Thanksgiving out of the way. Interesting. Yeah. So prior to that, there wasn't an actual day or it wasn't a holiday. It wasn't a holiday. So it was starting to like sort of come together, kind of coalesce a little bit. And I, I'm not sure when. It, it kind of, they kind of retrofitted it where it was like, oh, it's November. It's autumnal. We'll eat a lot of squashes <laughs> when, but we actually think based on like the letters and things like that, that the, the first quote unquote Thanksgiving was in an October. So it just got moved back a little bit. But as I said, it was really regional at first because it really was a New England tradition, very specifically a New England tradition. And I think we sometimes see vestiges of that a little bit where I'm someone who's lived on the West Coast my whole life, but I am sort of aware in the universe that oysters are part of Thanksgiving for a lot of people. Really? Mm -hmm. And even having grown up in Seattle where we're not afraid of seafood, that is not part of my personal tradition. And even like sounds a little unappealing to me. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm thinking, yeah. hmm. <laughs> like, seafood on Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Oyster stew, oyster stuffing, as well as just the plain oysters. And then having lobster on Thanksgiving. If you look at original Thanksgiving menus, they're very New Englandy, And they're also, um, well, the original one was very meat heavy. Hmm. And because they were just using what they had and they were, they were colonizers. And also settlers who didn't have a lot of material resources. So they weren't doing a lot of like baking 
or things like that. Complicated cooking. They didn't have special tools. They didn't have all the delicious spices that Americans have access to now. So it was like, well, let's roast some animals. And call it Thanksgiving. Yeah, basically. They had pumpkins, not sweet pu- pumpkins, but like as squash. And then the corn thing is really the only connection with Native Americans because corn was uh, a product that they did not have in Europe and had no familiarity with and really did have to be taught how to use that. But it's not generally believed that there were any Native Americans at this Thanksgiving feast. I I I think I could imagine that. <laughs> yeah. I know what we're taught in elementary school, but I don't think that's the reality of the situation. <laughs> that's probably a pretty good a pretty good assumption. So even in modern day Thanksgiving, are we still seeing these like regional differences and on what's on our table? Yeah, absolutely. Like you can see it even just by like if you follow food bloggers or food Instagrammers and the foods that they're choosing to cook. Sometimes you'll be like, well, I'll be danged. I've never heard of that before. There are so what's that guy's um his name is Nate Silver and he has that website that's called like 538 or whatever it is. And he's always like um doing polls and testing and seeing people's opinions are. And he did one a couple of years ago about Thanksgiving side dishes. And he said that on the West Coast, the most popular side dish was salad. Really? Yeah. Salad? I was like, you did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> salad is no one's favorite. <laughs> so one of the ways in which we can like trace changing food customs and food culture is macaroni and cheese. So growing up, I didn't know that macaroni and cheese was like a delicious food. food. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because I really only knew about like craft macaroni and cheese because my little sister was obsessed with it and I didn't care for it. But macaroni and cheese has, I think, for a long time been um, a Thanksgiving side dish for African-American families in the South. And you can see it spreading. And this is anecdotal at this point, but I know that I made macaroni and cheese as my contribution to Friendsgiving last year. And that's someone who didn't grow up knowing that it could be like nice and elegant <laughs> and taste really good and like use spices and stuff like that. And I see now with the, you know, I follow a lot of food Instagrammers because it's like kind of my job to know what's up. And everybody's doing macaroni and cheese as a Thanksgiving side dish now. Really? Which is new. Yeah. Very interesting. Are there, are there any other food trends that you're seeing emerge this year? I mean, everybody seems to be a lot into like the vegan and the healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just here on the West Coast, but are there any things that are really popping up? Well, people will say that they like to cook healthy, but But they they don't. don't. They absolutely don't. And I actually have real data to back this up. I mean, it's semi-anecdotal because it's just me, but however, when I was the food editor at KCT, which is a public television station, um, we posted so many recipes. That was part of our mission is people could like cook on their own. And we would always get requests for vegan recipes just constantly. You would think that our vegan recipes would be through the roof hits wise. No, I can tell you what was popular, what people actually wanted to read about dessert and pork. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom. Like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah. You're not alone, but worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, 
in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news? Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Dessert and pork. Yeah. So you'll hear from people who say they want to eat healthy the most, but no one's ever clicking on those recipes. <laughs> so maybe they're just like asking for the recipes so they can feel better about themselves when they cook the dessert and the pork. <laughs> I think that you're onto something. I mean, I, there are like dedicated vegan bloggers and recipe writers, and I think that they're the ones who have the audience because general interest, everyone's just lying to themselves about what they actually want to eat. So I don't think, and I also think that people really want to feel like they're indulging on Thanksgiving. For a lot of people, there's a sense of like, this is the one day out of the year where I don't have to think about it. So generally speaking, I don't think there's any like health food trends. One thing that I am noticing though is actually about dessert. Um, it used to be, I think kind of like pumpkin pie or bust. Oh yeah. And maybe like an apple pie also right. to round if it out. If you're like going to be dangerous. Yeah. 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 But I'm really seeing people move away from pumpkin pie as the dessert at Thanksgiving. You see so many other recipes that are marketed as Thanksgiving dessert recipes. Persimmons. I Persimmons are everywhere now. I mean, I think it's the same number that have been grown for a long time. But like you hear about them so much more. And I'm seeing all these really interesting looking recipes like a um, persimmon tart that I saw the other day. And I was like, that is really interesting. And persimmons are a little bit more difficult to work with than apples. But probably more rewarding if you like can figure them out. And it's like a showstopper if you yeah. show up and you're like, this is a persimmon tart. People are like, wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that as more Americans, um, we're learning more about like the varieties of produce. Growing up, I thought apples were only Red Delicious or Granny Smith. But now farmers have started growing as many apples as there actually are. So I think we're also discovering like pink apples and how delicious they are and that sort of thing. So I think there's a lot more experimentation with, it's still usually fruit-based desserts at Thanksgiving because I think we like to stick to the whole nature's bounty theme. <laughs> 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 but using like all the fruits that are available in the fall, which are a lot more than we traditionally think of. So speaking of of pumpkin, mm -hmm. we, we were just talking about this, you know, it feels like everything is pumpkin. Like we have to pumpkin buy the whole, I mean, yes. even I saw a recipe for some pumpkin flavored turkey. I'm like, why do we want to turn our turkey into a flavor of pumpkin? But Very strange. do you have any interesting, like, 
data or stats or how this evolved that now everything is is pumpkin based? Well, it actually makes me wonder if the reason why people are moving away from pumpkin pie as dessert is because they're so used to it now. They can just have it anywhere else. Now it's not special anymore. But I do think that uh, the reason why the pumpkin spice flavor got so popular was Starbucks, which is either cool or terrifying, whichever way you think about it, that one company can change the way that we all eat. That's wild. Or like the anticipation that we have of like the the pumpkin spice latte is coming. It's coming. Which, of course, is a classic marketing trick. You withhold things and then people lose their minds over it for no reason. And I do want to clarify, I don't think people necessarily always think about this. Pumpkin spice, there's no pumpkin in it. So it's just the spice flavorings that traditionally go into pumpkin pie. And our brains are only so smart. <laughs> if we eat the spice mixture that we're used to with something else, it's the same way why why people use tofu and then they'll put like barbecue spices on it and say, it tastes like barbecue. Yeah, because of the spices, not because of the actual main thing. So Starbucks like got us all riled up about pumpkin spice flavoring and we all went for it. And all the other companies want to try and get in on it. Why wouldn't they? Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Probably to varying levels of success. All right. So you're the host of a podcast, Smart Mouth Podcast, which I love because I never thought about food history the way I do when I'm eating something now yeah. after after our conversation. Thank you. That's awesome. I, I'd love to know, you know, it sounds really obvious that food is this this unifying force or we can sit down to a meal and we can suddenly have these hard conversations Mm -hmm. because food is there. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? What is it about food that is, is this like force that can bring people together? It's a buffer for one thing. Like I, I was at a business meeting earlier where we were doing some negotiations, but like we kept like stopping to like figure out what we wanted to eat. Like you keep having these like friendly moments of being like, well, you owe me this much money. What are you ordering? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like just like a nice little social barrier there as well. And if we're talking about home cooked foods as Thanksgiving's normally are, you have to be polite to the person who's hosting you and who cooked for you and all that kind of stuff. And then there's just the fact that you, these are people you might not see at any other point of the year, which depending on people's personalities is either going to mean like, we're really going to get into it or like, I'm going to be nice to you. <laughs> right. Which, we're not going to talk about that crazy topic. Yeah. Or, you know yeah. what? Game on. Cause, exactly. Cause that, that food's sitting in front of me and I feel like I could broach this topic now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know that there are some people who have real, um, let's call them lively Thanksgivings every year with their family members. But yeah, I think it's, and it's so communal and always has been. I mean, the whole idea of like, coming together for this big feast is that everybody's sharing their bounty. So in a way, it's a way of making people nice to each other. Right. I am going to cook all this food and shove it in your face. And yeah. Then, and then you have to be nice. And you yeah. have to be thankful. And, exactly. And say good things about me this Thanksgiving. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Were your Thanksgivings or are your Thanksgivings now, are they big or small or how, how do you prefer to do Thanksgiving? Medium sized. Well, I've never hosted my own Thanksgiving, so I don't have any like direct opinions on it. But the one that I usually go to is pretty medium sized, but sort of like con- contracts and, and gets bigger year to year. You know, people have kids. And so some years they have to like start going to their parents' house again and all that kind of stuff. But it's usually like fits at one big table. And that's a nice size. I think the the main thing about hosting Thanksgiving is if you're hosting it, you have to do the turkey or whatever your main is. And then everybody else brings the sides. Actually, another thing that's cool about that is that you're eating food that you've never had before because people come from all different parts of the country and the world and they bring their special dishes. And you're like, well, I had no idea that this existed. So I love that. And that's another, you know, that's another point about why Thanksgiving is so beautiful, too. You're just like learning so much. And as long as people can like keep their wits about them, (laughs) it's always nice. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. 
Hi, I'm Karina Bemisterfer, host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily true crime podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Daily true crime. Every day, Morning Cup of Murder tells you a straightforward, short form story about murder, true crime, cold cases, disappearances, serial killers, cults, and more. And I do that all in under 15 minutes. With over three years of stories and over 20 million downloads, the Morning Cup of Murder podcast has become a staple of so many people's daily routines. So, why not add it to yours? Stream Morning Cup of Murder everywhere you listen to podcasts. And remember, stay safe. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Nainen, the host of the Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. So even if you're maybe not the best cook, but you at least take a stab at some dish that's a family dish or a regional specialty, you get a little props over just going to the store and, and buying yeah. you know, whatever it is you were supposed to bring because you're bringing some of your personality or you're bringing something to the table. And yeah, whether it's good or not, you know, that's all right. Well, it's funny, too, because you can see like who grew up in a household where you have to make everything from scratch and who grew up like dumping multiple things from various <laughs> cans. And that counts as cooking because <laughs> both can be delicious, you know. So if you are at a Thanksgiving with people outside your family, you're getting like all these different traditions. And like there was there's sort of canned food dishes that I discovered, like something called a corn souffle that is so delicious. And I only ever eat it on Thanksgiving. My friend from North Carolina brings it and it's my favorite thing. Never would have had something like that otherwise. Right. So it's it's how you put it's how you put the ingredients together that really makes a difference, especially when we're talking about about Thanksgiving. And I love that you don't have, if you're the host, because so many people want to host Thanksgiving, but they're so nervous about like, oh my gosh, I'm going to spend thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. to feed all these people. But I love the idea that you can really have this concept of Friendsgiving where it's not um, like a chore for everybody else, but you can really say like, hey, bring in something that, that you love or something that you grew up with and, you know, bring it to the table. And somehow then that all evolves the Thanksgiving and just, you know. Yeah. I mean, and I think Thanksgiving too is a holiday where it's really, it's not just culturally acceptable. It's encouraged to have it Pollock style. So that's good too. Like no one should be afraid of hosting it because you're not, you don't have to do everything. You'll get too stressed out if you think you do. So this is like a much friendlier way of doing it things. It takes a little pressure off of yeah. you. Yeah. And for guests too, if you really don't want to cook, you can always bring the wine. So you're set either way. <laughs> and you can't go wrong. If you're the alcohol bringer, people love that. People are more than happy to welcome you in. Yes. Yes. So tell me a little bit about Smart Mouth Podcast. Tell me a little bit about like the things you talk about. Is there like a favorite episode that you that you've had recently? I always like forget who I've talked to and what I've done. <laughs> uh oh, uh Jacques Papin, who is a chef who a lot of people recognize from like old school PBS. He's wonderful. He's been living in America for decades and decades, but he's French and still has the French accent. And talking to him was a real treat. So I did something different with him. It was more of an interview about his life because he's someone who remembers like growing up in occupied France and that sort of thing. So there's a lot to talk to him about there. But usually for every episode, I'm talking about the history of a particular dish with the guest. And ahead of time, the guests will tell me what some of their favorite foods are. And I sort of poke around and see which one might have the most interesting backstory to it. And then in the episode, I'm like, here are the facts about it. And then the guests can like tell me their anecdotes. And what I have found is that it's a different way into interviewing people. Because obviously, you know, here in L.A., a lot of people come through on like their book tours, etc. So people who are on junkets very famously get asked the exact same questions all the time. But with me, they can be like, oh, I my mom made this dish growing up and it influenced me this way. So it's like a slightly different way in to talk to people, which... I'm an extremely nosy person. So I like that aspect of it. (laughs) That's so interesting. Wow. I'm going to have to definitely check out that episode because I'm a huge fan of his. And I can imagine just the wisdom that he brings and and how the different dishes have 
kind of carried him through his through his life through his career yeah absolutely he's he's really lovely to talk to and he brought a bottle of rosé to the interview so <laughs> that as well <laughs> every interview goes so much better with yes. with wine so if you could leave the listeners with with maybe one tip of of something they should be thinking about for thanksgiving whether they're cooking thanksgiving or they're going to their own friendsgiving or their family's thanksgiving what would you tell them there's two sides to me. There's the real fun killer side that is like really look into the history of Thanksgiving and how it's was extremely racist and all about colonizing. Like there's what we were taught in elementary school and there's what really happened. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that the United States is not the greatest country in the land. <laughs> I know we don't always like doing that, but just knowing the history. And once you know the history and know it's not great, you can really think about the things that you are grateful for and what you do want out of this holiday and sort of like, out of this country, big picture, <laughs> too. I think it actually makes for a more thoughtful experience, honestly. But in terms of the actual feast, like, keep that part easy. Don't stress out about it because it's not meant to be stressful. And mashed potatoes are incredibly easy to cook. And they're always a crowd pleaser. Just add more butter and milk and everyone's happy. And you you can't make a bad potato. I'm, I'm convinced you cannot make a bad potato dish. Well, the only way would be if you don't put enough butter and milk in <laughs> So I'm, I apologize to the vegans because I'm not speaking to you right now, but it's a real, real friendly dairy heavy dish. <laughs> so just, just go for it. Awesome. Well, tell the listeners where they can find your podcast and tune into all your episodes. So I'm on all the podcast players. It's just called Smart Mouth, which is two words. And then I am on social media. Let's see on Instagram at Catherine underscore Spires. And then I keep a food specific Instagram account at Smart Mouth Podcast. So do tell, where do you fall in the pumpkin debate? Are you pumpkin everything? Are you pumpkin nothing? What are you? I mean, I am, I love maybe one good piece of pumpkin pie, but that's pretty much my limit of pumpkin. But maybe I'm in the rare here. Maybe everybody loves pumpkin everything and I just need to get on the boat. I think this episode was so great. I loved hearing from Catherine and I've never really thought about the history behind food, but I think it's really fascinating, that idea of different cultures and the food that brings us all to the table. And in my mission to break down the taboos about money, maybe we can use food as this this thing that brings us together, that allows us to have tough conversations. Maybe try it around your Thanksgiving table. Hey, I don't know. Start talking about money. Tell them a few things that you learned on this podcast. Might be an interesting experiment. Thanks so much for checking out this episode. Do me a favor, if you love this episode, share it with your friends. Remember to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And I'll see you back here in a few days for a fresh new episode. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.